What's going on everyone? Austin John Place here and today I'm going to be going over how you could get uh Dark Ryan Shaman in Pokemon Legends RCS. <laughs> There's not too many left that we have to do anymore. <laughs> the Shaman and Darkrai events are actually not for everyone. I don't know where my face is. If you have a copy of either Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, the first time you speak to the clothier, they are going to be giving you the Eevee Festival mask and the Pikachu Festival mask, right? Oh, it turns out you could either have Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee or Sword or Shield for that. Did not know that. I don't know how accurate that is. But if you have a save data of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl, you're going to be getting the Darkrai event. Both of these events only happen after you've seen the credits. After you've beaten the game, so you are going to be able to make your way over to the board over here. And then you're going to be getting the option for a Token of Gratitude or the Darksome Nightmare. The Token of Gratitude is the Shaman quest. Medi of the Diamond Clan says she was saved by a mysterious Pokemon many years ago. Listen to her story to determine whether there's anything to do in the matter of follow-up. Got it. Token of gratitude. And then there's also the Darksome Nightmare for Darkrai. Kale of the Pearl Clan is reported seeing a strange Pokemon in the Coronet Highlands. After triggering the Darkrai quest, Kale's just gonna show up, making your job much easier. There's an old tale that's long been told in the Hisui region about a dark nightmare that visits people on lonely paths at night. It's a terrifying black Pokemon just like the one in the stories. Just like my coffee in the mornings. I saw it near the Clamber Claw Cliffs. Wow, that tried to say that three times fast. The Clamber Claw Cliffs. Got it. Oh, ominous tone. By the way, if you didn't know, uh, after you see the credits, talk to Laventon, and then you're going to get the other starter Pokemon. Pro tip. Also, another pro tip, don't expand your satchel too much. So these are going to be mythical Pokemon, meaning that you actually don't need to have them completed in order to complete your entire Pokedex. In fact, right now, I can literally go and fight uh, Arceus because I have, you know, every Pokemon registered in my Pokedex, and you don't need to have the mythical Pokemon in order to do so. As you can see right here, I don't have number 230. 38 registered and I don't have number 241 or 242. 238 being Arceus. Arceus isn't required to see Arceus. Just number 237 and above and then 239, 240. I'm not making a Garatina video. I don't need to make a Garatina video. You guys know, listen, if you need to know where Garatina is, go watch my video from Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. He's in the same place. This way to the spring path and you are going to be finding Garatina in here. I should probably state now, these Pokemon are shiny locked. It is impossible to get any legendary or mythical Pokemon in this game in its shiny form. First of all, let's go do the Shaman quest. So if we go to our missions and we go to the side request token of gratitude right there. And for that, we need to make our way to the Obsidian Fieldlands. In fact, one of the first places you've ever gone in the entire game, that's where we're returning to. And personally, I love that when, you know, these fun little hidden features and mythical Pokemon and stuff like that, they're all places that you visited already. Instead of it being a new place that you have to go to, instead it's a new feature of an old place. Anyways, right at the first camp, you're gonna be able to speak to Medi over here. Once when I was little, I got lost here in the Obsidian Fieldlands. I was wandering around in tears when I stumbled across a field of beautiful flowers. That's where I met it, a Pokemon I'd never seen before. It gave me a flower and then set off walking, as if to guide me somewhere, so I followed it. And it led me back to the place I recognized. Thanks to that Pokemon, I made it home safely. But I never got to properly thank it. I like to find it again and tell it how grateful I am. The only problem is, I haven't been able to find that field of flowers, so I'd like you to help me. Here, this is the only clue I've got. And they are going to be handing you a Gracidia. Gracidia is a type of flower. Is that a real flower? Gracidia flowers are not real. They are based on two flowers that are the Chinese hibiscus, that's probably what I recognize it as, and the mandevilla. In order to find Shaman, once you have the Gracidia flower, you need to make your way to the Floreo Gardens. You, it might need to be sunny out. It's raining right now, so actually this is a perfect time for me to go test it. In fact, I'm gonna plop down a save right here. And once you make your way over here, you're gonna see that there's a big, big empty field of dead flowers. 
Oh, it is gonna trigger. Cool. It seems to be the flower field Medi has been looking for. Is this the field from back then? Hey there. The flowers may be withered, but I remember these surroundings exactly. It has to be the place. Medi walks forward. Screams out loudly, as if to echo to the mountains across from her. Excuse me, can you hear me, kind Pokemon? A long time ago, I got lost out here, and you guided me back. I don't know if I'd have made it home without you, so I just came to say... Thank you so much. She closed her eyes, and upon opening, she realized the flowers have all been brought back to life. Field of Cressidia, and in the middle, Shaman appeared. Thank you very much, Austin John. I'll make sure to thank Mai for pointing me toward you as well. I suppose you'd be staying here to study that Pokemon? You know what study means, right? We're gonna catch it. All right, so Shaman is going to be here in this patch of flowers, and it's always going to be here. If for whatever reason you think it ran away or you can't find it or something else, you could just zone out and zone back in. I chased it out of the flowers and I got myself my thumbnail. So Shaman is just gonna hang out here in these flowers and not really put up much of a fight or anything else. See, not much of a fight. It may just kind of scurry away a little bit. Perfect time to get a back strike. And there you go. <laughs> it's not really that hard. <laughs> Token of gratitude complete. Not gonna lie, I've caught this thing three times already and it's broken out of the ball several times. This is the first time that it was ever just like one shot done easy. And a pretty neat thing because you've already been given the item. If we head down to the bottom, you're gonna see the Gracidia over here. You can use that on Shaman to transform Shaman to its sky form. Boom, sky form Shaman. With its little, little crazy looking hair and everything. Super cool looking. Oh yeah. Okay, let's head on Darkrai. From the mountain camp, all we need to do is walk right over here. This is where the Alpha Bronzong likes to hang out. And it does need to be nighttime for this. I could believe I believe it could be any weather condition. So let's just make it nightfall. Perfect. We have a nice clear night. Or is it called a sunny night? Don't understand that. And just making our way to the map marker that I showed you. And then, as soon as you approach, the screen's gonna get all black. Dark is gonna be looming around in the background, being all mysterious and such. And then appear right in front of you! That's a high-res Darkrai right there. So, Darkrai. If you try to get close to Darkrai, this little circle around it is going to make you, I believe, sleepy, and then you're not going to be able to move, and then it's going to be able to hit you with attacks. He's a very aggressive Pokemon, so you could choose to throw out your own Pokemon and do battle. However, when you do, you're going to notice that he likes to zoom you away. And then you're going to notice these little portals. That's where Darkrai is hanging out. And if you try to throw over a Pokemon, you're gonna notice that you kinda can't. In fact, as soon as you go ahead and you get close, you're gonna notice that Darkrai is just gonna sort of disappear. Shaman, thanks for getting that tumble stone for me, dog. Yeah, as soon as the Pokeball leaves my hands, Darkrai just kinda disappears. Oh, nope, even then I still didn't get it. I'm probably just gonna use the, the cutscene for the actual image of the, uh, the thumbnail. And I'm just going to catch him how I want to catch him, which is stealthy. So, for my stealthy catch, I'm going to pop down a stealth spray, and I'm also going to drop down a smoke bomb. So, as I've noticed, Darkrai, I've hit him in the face with a jet ball like 15 times, and he has not got caught. But then, if I get a back shot, he's immediately caught. So, let's go ahead and try that. And then luckily, after he pops out of the ball, you could just continue to retarget him. It only took two. Kale's gonna show up, say astounding. Now everyone will be able to rest easy. Yes, now no one else will fall victim to such dark nightmares. I suppose I better be heading back home myself now, but I won't ever forget what you did. Farewell, young one. And that's the darksome nightmare complete.
Great. And while you choose to battle Darkrai, as I just showed, it's kind of much easier if you do it the stealthy method. That took me, what, less than a minute? Now this super happy light guy and the super scary dark guy are just hanging out, having a little chatty poo. Okay, well, they're having a fun little conversation, aren't they? And when speaking to Laventin, that's going to be dark right registered in the Pokedex. Of course, we can get its level up to 10, although doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's not like we're shiny hunting or anything else. So there you go. As you can see, that was side quest number 92 and 93. 94 being the incarnate forces of Hisui, which I just made the video on yesterday. On the trail of Garatina, that's one that's pretty self-explanatory, tells you literally where to go. Oh, I did everything except for the, uh, the special origin orbs. Still need to do Clefairy's Moonlit Dance on that one. It's always a pain. And in this game as well, I chose to not catch the Ponyta. Pretty much all the side quests and... The mythicals, the difficult legendaries. Next video, hear me out, got something really, really, really special for the last and least desirable collectathon. So I'm gonna try to make it as interesting as possible. Hired a voice actor to, uh, to help me out with it and I'm looking forward to it. But also, now that we're kind of near the end of this, I'm interested on what other videos or content you may want from me about this game. So if you could do me a favor and leave a comment down below or reply to me on Twitter or tweet me with like what specific things you're having trouble with or what you want. Some people are asking for a money guide still, even though I don't really know why you would need a money guide, but I can start looking to that as well as I know that there's some methods out there that are inconsistent. So I could try to figure that out and uh, yeah, we can go from there. Well, great. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.